Who freaking cares? Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Zahra Biro. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. If you have not hit that subscribe button, you can go ahead and do so because I have some amazing content dropping. I'm going to be dropping uh, weekly videos, kind of answering questions regarding everything on my channel. I really try to keep things really authentic, really original, kind of just sharing my story, my life struggles, um, just kind of everything from like A to Z. It's not just fashion based or beauty based. It's kind of a mix of everything so you know hop on this this journey with me and i hope you guys really enjoy the valuable content that i'm going to be releasing in my upcoming videos um today's video is going to be about um questions that i asked my instagram followers that i asked you guys um what type of questions do you guys have regarding relationships divorce marriage things like that kind of like in the muslim community slash arab community and i kind of want to share my insight or my feedback or my thoughts and opinions um but there's one thing i kind of want to mention before moving forward in no way shape or form am i here to influence somebody to make um a decision that's like against their values or against their culture or anything like that so please be sure to consider all of your options before just taking my options i'm not a religious scholar i am not a, a marriage counselor i'm just here simply sharing my thoughts and my feedback um hoping to like shed light or maybe I'll help you guide you on like a, a better path or maybe just like kind of push a light bulb somewhere in there um but i hope you guys really enjoy the the content that i'm going to be sharing right now so without further ado let's get started the first question is would you ever consider getting married again and finding a new partner um absolutely i do not plan on staying single for the rest of my life i think that it's super important that you meet your other half as they say because you know in islam they say like the marriage completes half of your deen so i do anticipate to meet somebody to meet the right person i don't just want to like meet anybody for the sake of just like meeting somebody um i want to meet the right person i'm on that journey right now actually um i've met you know a couple of people um through kind of like dating apps or just like you know networking people that i kind of like knew in the past and stuff like that um, but I'm the type of person that like I'm very particular when I'm like having conversations with these people I know exactly what to ask just so kind of I could kind of like eliminate the wrong person or just like the wrong candidate um, So that way I'm not wasting my valuable time and I'm not wasting their valuable time if that makes sense um, So I do anticipate inshallah to get married um, Whenever the right candidate fits I guess you can say the next question is, does your ex-husband live near you and does he have custody to see the kids weekly? Um, yes, me and my ex, um, the kid's father, we live in the same city. So it's very important, alhamdulillah, like that it worked out like that. And we do share custody of the children. Um, right now, I kind of see the kids a little bit more than he is. Um, but moving forward, inshallah, we're going to split the custody to be like 50-50 between us. We're trying to work it out um, to work it out together versus like through the court system because I think it's really important if you have like a very civil divorce and you have a very a civil after divorce, I guess you could say like, you know, reconciling and talking about these types of things. It's, a, it's It can get a little bit tricky and um, off the edge if, if, you know, he remarries and I remarries, things might change. So what we try to do from now is kind of just set things in stone um, to where it's fair to both of us that if we ever remarry, there's a 50-50 between kids. Um, because, you know, I need to share, you know, move on and he also like will move on. Um, and the kids need to have a healthy mama and baba, you know, mommy and daddy split. So we're trying to work it at that. Um, who knows down the line, like if we ever end up like i don't know moving to different cities or things like that hopefully not just because it's so much easier pickups and drop-offs and then the kids being able to see their dad and and then coming back to see me um alhamdulillah it worked out very well for me um and i hope that it works out well for like other single moms and like divorced parents as well um but for right now that's kind of what we're doing and um, i think it's crucial that the kids feel most com comfortable um during a divorce so that's kind of what we're working at, like, is having our kids kind of be, like, our number one priority. The next question is thoughts on living with in-laws. Uh, so I know a lot of people are probably not going to like my answer. I know that there's so many cultures out there that live with their in-laws and... Um, 
it's just kind of part of how they get married and, and like move about their, their marriage life. I personally disagree with it. I find it to be super problematic. Um, number one, invasion of privacy. Like, you know, you can't do anything when your in-laws are in the house. Um, um, for me, at least, I, 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 I would not be able to do it. I have lived with my in-laws um, for like a short while. Um, but that's like just like during like certain vacation times or things like that and let me tell you it's not it's not the funnest thing um not because of them or myself but i live a certain way and i have like my own things and i have my own style my own aesthetic the way i am in the kitchen the way i'm with my kids the way i'm with my when i'm married and just kind of things like that and like when you have somebody that's like on a different vibration or like on a different level than you um things can kind of start colliding and crashing and it can kind of like lead to problems or tensions in the household and that's just going to be like an overall disaster um i personally do not recommend it um but again i understand that some cultures are like that i feel like we should kind of change culture a little bit and that can only happen if girls kind of stand up for themselves if you're okay with living your with your in-laws that's amazing that's great if you're able to work it out and you find it that it fits your lifestyle you know i fully support that but for myself personally i cannot do it um i just can i'm just able to live me and my children or me and my spouse and my children so this is a pretty tough question somebody said how do you break through from a toxic marriage while having kids in marriages it could be really difficult if there is a spouse that's financially dependent on the other um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I kind of lived through that and I mentioned that on my Instagram a uh, story where I said you know like I used to depend on a man financially and then like now I kind of built myself and where I'm an independent woman and I have everything I've built everything that I've ever dreamed of all alone with no man's support and if I wasn't able to do that I won't really be the woman that I am today um so I know that there's a lot of toxic men toxic marriages out there that could be a muslim marriage an arabic marriage a christian marriage whatever type of marriage whatever type of culture you're from toxic marriages exist everywhere and um if you're not really financially independent and ready to move on from your spouse then you need to give yourself time to kind of reach that point so for example if you know that your marriage is kind of falling apart it's so unhealthy for your children um, and you realize like it's really affecting your kids behavior it's affecting your children in school um, it's really bringing out like bad sides in your kids there's yelling screaming shouting um, bickering arguments and all that type of stuff or it could be other things you know lack of love lack of care lack of empathy lack of uh, financial like you know there's nobody he's probably not being a great provider and it's just not working out for you guys um there could be so many other reasons um in the marriage that like won't make sense for you or won't make sense for the family as a whole and until you reach that point where you're like okay i'm able to move on i'm able to be financially independent and do all of these things without a man that's when you should be able to kind of move on pick up and go along the lines that you know you both agree that you guys like want a divorce and and separate and things like that now again with these types of things it can get a little bit tricky because i don't want to really influence somebody to go about divorce you know divorce is the last resort that you should be going to you know i it took me a very long time to reach divorce after eight years of marriage and after so much hardship and so much separation and so much failure that that's when i said you know what i've done everything that I possibly could and right now I just can't do it anymore um another question was how do you know when to walk away so this is kind of like a pretty vague question it's not really direct it doesn't really like I'm just gonna answer this if you're just with somebody before you're being married or you're just in a relationship right now but like understand yourself you know you need to have a clear understanding as a man or a woman if you're watching this what it is that you want out of a, of a relationship you should be able to know from A to Z, you should be able to have questions um, and you should be able to get answers from that person and kind of like write things down and be like, okay, well, this person doesn't fit this, 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 this. Oh, that's a red flag. Oh, that won't work out. I'm out. So you should be able to kind of know these types of things before you even dive urge into a relationship very heavily. Um, you should be able to understand that person as a whole. Test that person. Ask them questions. Put them in like, you know, tough situations. Kind of see how they react. Are they angry? Are they a positive person? Are they a negative person? 
how do they treat their family how do they treat other people if you ever went out to eat um you know watch his behaviors is he stingy is he kareem is he like a is he somebody that like is willing to like pay for your stuff i'm not saying that a person's not good if he doesn't do that i'm just saying if this these are qualities that you're looking for in a man then you should be uh, you should be 100% uh, sure before diving too deep into the relationship. However, based off of your question, you're asking when should you when should you be able to walk away or when do you know you should be able to walk away? And you know from your gut, you know, like your gut doesn't lie to you. If you are constantly fighting or bickering or arguing about so many silly things, you're like, okay, well, you know what? These are red flags and I should not be able to move on with this person because there's so much toxicity and we haven't even got into an engagement or a relationship or I'm sorry, a deep relationship or a marriage. Um, so it kind of just depends on your relationship. It depends on how far you've gotten into it. But my biggest advice for anybody getting into a relationship right now is one thing, you should be able to know exactly what it is that you want out of a relationship and in the first month you know and this is me being generous in the first month you should be able to know if that person is for you or not you know from a couple of questions on dating apps i'll ask a person i'll be like hey you know like um i have a couple questions for you if you don't mind like you know if you can answer them for me I'll look at this person's response and there's a couple of things where I'm like, oh no, like this is just not going to work. I mean, and I'll give you a funny example. One person told me, what's my role with your children? And I was like, you know what? That's not a question you ask a single mom. If you're, if you're getting to know a divorced woman with kids, you don't ask that type of question. You should know automatically that you are going to be, um, you know, their stepfather. You're there to care. You're there to, you know, provide, you know, that love and care and stuff like that. And if you're not ready for that, that's a red flag for me. So I knew that that person was out. Um, and I let them know and I shared and I communicated with them. I said, you know, you asking that question tells me that you are just not the right candidate for me because, you know, I'm a single mother of two. And until you have kids one day, that type of question, you know, can actually, you know, be very hurtful. Um, so it just kind of, if I had to ask that question or, or, or if he had to ask that question um, himself as well, he wouldn't have known if I was the right candidate and then vice versa. So it's very important to ask questions in the beginning um, and then just go based off of your gut feeling and, you know, write things down and kind of see the pros and cons, kind of weigh things out and see um, and hopefully it works out for the best, I guess. Another person asked me, when should the right time be for having children? Um, the right time is the right time for you and your spouse. So everybody's different, you know, like not everybody's the same. Not everybody's in the same boat. Um, for me personally, I got married very young and I had kids, you know, like within like the first year of being married. Um, it was tough. It was hard. And I really wasn't ready. Um, I just thought that, you know, kids are so cute and that like, you know, I wanted to dress them up and I wanted to be pregnant and take photos. And that's that's how innocent I was um and uh, and you know alhamdulillah I'm grateful for that experience but like me going back in time I would say don't have kids Zahra until you're ready um and it just depends on you and your spouse like you know are you guys in agreement how is the relationship going um are you guys able to have kids um uh you know there's so many factors that kind of play a role into it but the best advice is that you and your spouse should be able to come to a conclusion together about when you want to have kids um, my advice would be, and I say this to my sisters that, that got married, and I say this to anybody that like is like a recently newlywed, um, is take your time having kids. Enjoy life, go out, travel, love each other, fall in deep love with each other, be, become best friends, and then build a baby that's from you and him together. Um, when you have your children together, um, it will be worth it. It's not, it's not, you're not bringing a child that's from a toxic relationship or a toxic marriage. So it's very important to know the timeline of how well your marriage is kind of established and it's kind of going and then just kind of build your way around that. So this question is kind of a little bit different than the other question, but I'm just kind of going to read it out loud. And she said, your advice on how to know if a guy is right for you before letting yourself fall for him. So very good question. Um, because I've been in a marriage for like a very long time and then I got divorced and then I got remarried and then got divorced again um, to their father. Um, I kind of know a lot about relationships and I kind of know about what I want and what I don't want. So my biggest suggestion for you, I'm not sure how old you are, um, and this doesn't really apply to your age, but you should have a list of questions or a list of things you do want and a list of things you don't. Um, and I suggest you actually write this down on pen and paper or an Excel sheet and just kind of save it in your phone. 
um, or like in your Google Docs or whatever and go back to this every time you meet somebody and you know look at this person talk to them for like a couple of weeks or up to a month and start checking off things that he is in your do list or things that he is in your do not list and kind of see well will this work for me do the pros outweigh the cons or do the cons outweigh the pros and just kind of go from there you have to understand that because you don't want to fall for somebody that looks good or for somebody that smells good or for somebody that makes a lot of money i mean what's the benefit if he looks good smells good wears nice clothes has a mansion has a nice car but then every night he he'll he'll, he'll abuse you or he's emotionally abusive or he prevents you from seeing your family or he's cheap on you or something like that so what would all of that matter if there are things that will make you unhappy in the relationship so you should be able to kind of know um, from your, your your do's and don'ts what pros and cons outweigh each other and then just kind of base your future with that person based off of that how do you convince your parents to saying no to a marriage because of different culture and different race now this person um, she seems like, you know, she's Muslim and her name is a Muslim name. Um, and it's very sad for me to see so many marriages not happening because somebody's of a different culture or somebody's from a different country or somebody's from a different village or somebody's of a different color or a different ethnicity or a different race. What's wrong with our community? Is this what Islam teaches us? Is this, is this who we are? Because that's not who we are. That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that like um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in tribes so we can get to know one another. So why are we always limiting our, our, our daughters and our sons to marrying only certain types of people? Um, sadly, and, and I'm going to say this because I was part of this, I used to think that I only wanted to marry a Lebanese person and I only wanted him from certain villages and I only wanted him to be, you know, of certain, like, not like ranking, but like of certain, um, like position and like in that, like in that village. And growing up, I realized that is the most horrible thing that I grew up with. I'm not saying that I grew up like that from my family, but naturally in, in the community, in the Muslim community, if somebody married outside of Lebanon, like, you know, if, if a family member married somebody that was not Lebanese, Oh my god, you know, like she married somebody that's Iraqi or Yemeni or Afri African or Afghani or whatever. And oh my god, let's point fingers. Oh my god, oh my god. There's so much barriers. There's so much this. There's so much that. Who freaking cares? At the end of the day, what's important is that you're marrying a Muslim. You're marrying somebody that believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And it doesn't matter the cultural difference. There's so many um, interracial marriages right now um, and intercultural marriages happening right now that are more successful than marriages that are of the same culture, of the same race. Way more successful. And it's actually so beautiful. And you, and you see people um, all over the internet with successful, happy marriages. And they come from different backgrounds. They grew up differently. They're from, they look differently, they have different color, skin color, they have different eye color, um, their, their kids might be of a different color, um, and it's so beautiful to see them come together and be one beautiful, happy family, because what's important at the end of the day is that you and this person match, 100%. You and this person um, match on so many levels. This person makes you happy. You make this person happy. There's amazing communication between you and you and that person. And what's most importantly is that this person is Muslim. You know, why am I gonna look at somebody that's of a different con like from a different country, and you know my parents would disagree because he's of a different country? Does that really matter? Does it does it really matter if a person's Yemeni or Iraqi or Lebanese or or, or American or white or black or Indian? or whatever color they may be, does that matter? It shouldn't matter, like this is not our principles. This is not what Islam teaches us. And we have to change the narrative for our future generation. So I would say, if you are watching this video, um, to probably, and, and this is what I'm gonna do, honestly. If, if I ever came across a situation, is what I'm gonna do is create like a PowerPoint and just kind of show culture and Islam and how what, the culture is doing is so haram and it's so wrong and how religion should overpower culture. The biggest problem in our communities, in our society right now, is that we overvalue culture more than religion. 
and that's where um, a lot of taboo comes into place and that's so wrong that's inappropriate we shouldn't be like that so what I would do if I were you is do research um, compare what your culture says versus what your religion says and try to talk to your parents about it sometimes it takes one person to make a movement I'm not saying that you should be making a movement but if you feel that this person is right for you um, and this person is is the one for you and you guys have come to so much agreement you should fight for that and you should be together and you should convince your parents or try to t talk to your parents um, in a very calm and respectful manner and try to convince them to go about that because what's most importantly is deen try to probably involve like a local imam or a local sheikh or somebody that's highly respected in the community probably share some success stories um, and just kind of you know be smart about it um, it's just really sad to see our community come down to this I personally totally 1 million percent disagree with it and if I ever came across a situation I would definitely stand up for that person no matter what color they are or no matter what race they are no matter where they're from as long as they are Muslim and they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are followers of Ahlul Bayt and they are followers of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, then that's what's the most important thing for me so everybody's story is different um, and if I were you, this is, I mean, I hope you kind of take my advice um, into, into light and you kind of seek different opinions and you do your research before moving forward. Um, but this is my greatest advice that I can give you. Somebody asked me, how were your children affected? They, they were affected back in 2018 when we got divorced because I lived in a different state and he lived in a different state. So they were kind of um, barely seeing their dad in like a timely manner. Um, so that was really, really, really difficult for them. Um, but then when I moved to California, things got a lot easier on the kids because they were able to see mama and baba. They were kind of being, you know, they're still able to see mama and baba um, equally each time um, during the week. And um, it's been working out really great for them. Um, and the reason why is because me and their dad are co-parenting and we're making sure that the kids are not stressed out and the kids are 100% at ease and that we don't want them to feel stressed in any way shape or form so we're doing our best to kind of make sure that that goal is met on a daily basis um, and that includes you know, respecting our differences respecting our new marriages um, respecting our new lifestyles and just kind of agreeing to kind of what's um, what's gonna happen in the future somebody asked me or how is the process of divorce so divorce um, is different based off of your sect um, I know like different sects have different ways of how they divorce um, Divorce should always be the last resort, you know You don't want to get into an argument with your spouse and then oh my god divorce me the next day That's very childish. You have to try to work things out differences will come along and that's totally okay Um, you know, you know, I always say this example um, My mom gave birth to five kids. We're from the same womb from the same father and we still fight till this day. So, and we're from the same womb. So imagine meeting somebody that's from a different womb. Um, so naturally you're gonna have differences. So um, the process of divorce should be like the last thing you go to. But if you do reach that point after like many, 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 many tries of trying to work things out and reconcile the marriage and it doesn't work out, the process is very simple. You know, you, you either come into agreement that you both want to divorce, you attend, you know, the Imam or Sheikh's office, and you propose a, um, a contract of divorce and that's how you kind of get divorced I'm not sure how it is in other cultures but that's kind of how it is for the Shia school of thought somebody asked me do you think getting married at 19 to a guy who's 26 is a bad idea because of age difference I don't think it's a bad idea I think you know age difference should always be like considered like you don't want to be 19 and this guy's 55 obviously i'm not saying that you shouldn't fall in love with somebody who's 55 i'm just saying like you know you need to understand there's a huge gap between you and that person um there are some age gaps that are like are like okay with um me personally my age gap was like uh three or four years between me and my ex um i know somebody that's 10 years i know somebody else that's 15 years I know somebody else that's 30 years so it just kind of depends on the situation I don't think there's anything wrong with it I feel like if you're both mature enough and you both come to an agreement and you guys have great communication and there's an effective dialogue between you and that person um, and it works out for you and you've been talking to this person for a while now and you feel like you guys just kind of click on so many levels then I just personally don't see why not 
just make sure like you take your time and again kind of do a pros and cons sheet um, have qu some questions down that you want to ask this person to make sure that this person is the right person for you before kind of falling into that trap of like loving that person and then having a family with that person and realizing after so many years that this person is kind of not for you so just make sure that you kind of do your homework before you dive into this relationship so somebody asked what was the hardest part about marriage and divorce so this is gonna get a little bit juicy and I'm just gonna like give it to you as it is the hardest part about marriage is the first couple years adjusting living with somebody that's in the same house and sleeping on the same bed as you you've been sleeping by yourself this whole your whole life and now you have to share a bed with somebody and then you don't know a lot of things about that person because you know like in our in our in our in our religion like you know you can't really live with somebody till you're married to them um and until you marry that person um, you're not gonna really know much about their living circumstances or how they live. He would take a shower and then throw his towel on the floor, you know? And I'm just like, dude, pick it up, you know? Um, and like, I remember like when I was younger, like, you know, this, this stuff would really bother me. He wasn't the greatest listener. I'm not saying he's a bad man. I'm just saying like, he wasn't the greatest listener. We were both still very young. Um, and he would still leave his towel. Occasionally he'd pick it up. Occasionally he wouldn't. Um, but it's just like small things like that, that kind of would bother me. Um, and probably another d difficult thing about marriage is, you know, if there are, um, in-laws that like get really involved in the marriage and want to share their opinions and want to have a say about everything that could be really, really, really problematic. Sometimes finances, um, you know, if, if, you know, the finances aren't working out or if there isn't enough money or if there's too much money or if the person's stingy, um, these types of things could be problematic if this type of stuff is not sorted out before the marriage. Um, so I'm trying to think what else could be. Children. Sometimes children could make your marriage go downhill. Yes, they can. And uh, the reason why is because if you're not ready to be a parent and you don't know anything about being a parent and you're a young parent, chances are when that kid comes into your life, you're going to be really stressed out. And you're just not gonna know what to do with it you're gonna lose your love with your spouse because especially if you don't work on it in the beginning because when a kid comes in they consume you they consume you so freaking much that you forget who you are and then your spouse might forget who they are and then you just both forget that you're you know in a marriage and at least for me i just started to view him as a dad and he started to view me as a mom Versus me viewing him as my husband and him viewing me as his wife. And I think that's where the marriage uh, really started to dwindle down was the way that we kind of started to view each other. Um, and that's kind of what affected our marriage. And it just kind of varies, you know, uh, you know, what makes a marriage kind of fall out and die out is so many factors. Not going on date nights, not having like romantic moments or um, watching movies together or just kind of being... Um, intimate together showing you know love showing affection and how this type of stuff will move forward then it can definitely be very problematic down the line and it could probably make your marriage fall apart and end up in divorce um so addressing the second part of the question is what makes a di what what's the hardest part about divorce um so the my the first time that i got divorced it was really difficult on me because a new lifestyle single mom two kids, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing with my life. I'm trying to do this and do that, trying to have my business, trying to do this, trying to flip that, trying to work that, trying to blog this. I was trying to do 50 million things at once because I wanted to be independent so bad because I was dependent on, my, on a man my whole life. Um, so I ended up living with my mom and that was just the most difficult part for me. Um, my mom my mom welcomed me, welcomed me with her, her full open arms and gave me everything that I needed, emotional support, you know, you know, words of encouragement, um, financial support. She gave me a roof over my head. She really, really, really was there for me. Um, her and my family, alhamdulillah. Um, but the most difficult part is just getting on your feet, which is why I always encourage girls to be at it in a marriage. Girl, go make that money. Go make that money, secure that job, be independent. Make sure that you have um, an emergency fund because if you fall on your feet and you have zero dollars in the bank, and God forbid you don't have a family, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, you probably can't answer that because you're not gonna do anything, you know? You're gonna have to rely on people and that's the worst thing in life is to rely on somebody. I've been there. I've been at really low parts in my life and that was the, probably the most difficult part of my divorce 
was you know being in that position trying to build my way up but if it wasn't for those moments i really won't be who i am today and i won't be able to share this journey with you guys so everything kind of happens for a reason enjoy the journey even though it's difficult and i know that sounds crazy like who enjoys that type of journey but if you really truly enjoy the journey even in your sacrifice and in your struggle in your lowest 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 of days you could make the best out of your life if you have a positive mindset do you ever think like after your divorce you can find someone else because because we created you in pairs? Absolutely. Of course. After divorce, my life is not over. I have a new chapter in my life. Divorce is not the end. You know, I you know, I want girls to stop thinking that if they're divorced and they're single moms or they're just single girls, that does not label them as being women who are not worthy or valuable of being married again. There are amazing men out there. Amazing men out there that would love to welcome you as their wife and would treat you so good you just have to be very patient and you have to be able to know if that person's for you or not based off of having a list of questions and doing a pros and cons list or a do's and don'ts a do's and don'ts list um and um you're worthy i'm worthy just because i'm divorced with two kids does that mean like i i'm not supposed to get married again or i'm supposed to like lose hope no that's not the type of person that i am um, I'm manifesting being married to an amazing man. I'm manifesting that and I'm working on that and I want a healthy, happy marriage. I want a partnership. This is things that I want. There are things that I learned in my previous marriage that I can apply to my new marriage and you best bet that I'm looking for that and I want that. I'm not saying that I'm not about self-love and finding yourself. But I'm saying that eventually down the line, I do wish to have that and I will manifest it and I will have that inshallah. And I want you watching this to believe the same for yourself because you're worthy of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like, um, I mean, look at Prophet Muhammad and Khadija alayhi salam. I mean, look at them both. Read our, read like these types of stories that happened back in the day. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, told us and gave us these types of examples to learn from them read about our history and read about our prophet and see how he married a divorced woman and what he brought about after that he brought Fatima Zahra alayhi salam you know Sayyidatu Nisa al alamin and 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 if he if he was that type of man that said no I'm not going to marry a divorced woman would Fatima Zahra alayhi salam would have been born she would not because Islam embraces otherwise Islam embraces otherwise and I actually would love to share a story that happened to me a couple of weeks ago on an app where somebody was interested in talking to me and we kind of matched on this app and um, he was saying I've never seen I mean there's a, like one person that, that mentioned this to me before and this person mentioned to me again and he said I'm actually looking for a divorced woman and he said a divorced woman have more experience in marriage they know what they want and they're very clear with their intentions. Um, and he said, and, and, and for me, I would be so happy to welcome a divorced woman in Islam um, into, a, into my marriage, you know? And I just thought that was so beautiful. You know, like there are people out there that think like that and that there will only come your way if you manifest it. But if you're gonna sit here and, and sit down and be like, oh no, like I'm not gonna get anybody because I'm divorced and I'm single and I have kids, well then that's what you're gonna get. So you need to make sure that you're gonna be very positive about your situation and that you you better manifest the best for yourself and you better manifest, uh, inshallah, a healthy relationship with an amazing man. So hope for the best and wish for the best and there's no harm in finding the right spouse after your divorce. The light does not end there. The light does not end there. There is a rainbow right after your divorce. You just have to be willing to go find it put in the work and work on yourself and find yourself and eventually you will meet the right person inshallah. Somebody asked, do cheaters ever change their ways? Uh, you know, I, alhamdulillah, like in my marriage, um, I'm the type of person, I don't ever get involved with these types of things. I'm the type of person, I love to sleep on my pillow and I just like to sleep happy. I don't wanna think about somebody cheating, somebody snooping, somebody texting, I don't like that stuff. I trust with my heart. This is how all of my relationships start. Whether it's with people, whether it's with business, whether it's with my husband or with my kids, I trust right off the bat. And I tell that person like, I trust you and this is the type of relationship that we're gonna build together. And obviously you have to kind of test the situation. Um, for me, alhamdulillah, cheating was never an issue. 
um, because uh, it's, it just never was an issue. Alhamdulillah. Um, but do I think cheaters will change? I don't think cheaters change. I think once a cheater, always a cheater. Um, and that's because if you betray my level of trust, it's going to be very hard for me to trust you again. And most often than not, most likely than not, you could probably read articles about this. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Uh, this is a good question. How to have healthy relationship with your spouse? Um, so one of the things that I learned from my previous marriage that I want to, that I, I don't want to do in my new marriage, inshallah, is, um, you know, things that we didn't do. We didn't do dates. We didn't do movie nights. We didn't do alone time. Um, we didn't have vacations alone. Um, we never had like open communication where we kind of talked about how we're feeling. We never really assessed the marriage, these types of things. So the best way for me to kind of make sure that I have like a healthy relationship um, with my spouse is to include the following things. Number one um, is to have effective communication. Be able to talk openly about your feelings, what makes you happy, what makes you hurt, what makes you bothered, and make sure that you're being heard and make sure that you um, are relaying the information in a very positive way. Um, and you're not just like fighting or arguing or like hiding behind the bush. I'm the type of person personally, like if I have a problem, I'm going to flat out say it to you. And I'll be like, hey, you did something today and I really didn't like it. You know, my previous marriage, it was like, you know, thrown under the bus. Nobody used to care. But in the future marriage, um, I don't want that. If you are not here to hear me out and understand exactly what it is that I'm trying to relate to you and you're not going to be a good listener and work on that together so we have a good outcome and kind of make sure that we're both happy and we're on the same page, then that's going to lead to like more problems down the line. It's going to mean like probably the marriage is going to be start getting like a little bit more toxic and that's something that I don't want to that I don't want to even get involved into. So communication is key. And number two, I want to be able to address the marriage on a periodic basis. So for example, address things either on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, kind of see where, where we're at. And because I have like a business mindset, I honestly most likely are going to treat my marriage like a business. Um, and I'm going to be like, you know, yo, well, it's been a month since we're kind of been married. Well, these are the types of things that are going on. And these are the types of things that are not going on. Well, we need to kind of work on this, this, this. Well, we're doing great here, here, here. And just kind of make sure that we're on the same page. I think, again, that kind of goes back to, to, to number one, which is having effective communication. Um, and number three, which is really, 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 really important. Freaking date nights, bro. Like, I feel like in our culture, I don't know if it's just our culture, if it's other people as well, but like, we just stop dating after we get married. It's like it freaking dies out. Why? I don't know why it dies out. No, it should not die out. Put that kid, if you have a kid together, at your mom's, his mom's, get a babysitter, whatever. Go out for movies, go out for sushi, go out for pizza. Um, it doesn't even have to be eating. Go out for a walk, go hiking, go on a three-day vacation, whatever it may be. Enjoy yourself and, you know, nurture your marriage, nurture that partnership, nurture it, you know, take care of it. And if you're just going to be um, draining, you know, the, the, the battery in your marriage, then how are you going to recharge if you don't do these types of things? And I always use this example. Anything in your life that you need to take a break on and just kind of escape from and kind of recharge it, that's what you need to do. So I always say, like, you are a battery. Everything in life is a battery. Eventually, that battery is going to run out. Marriage is also a battery. It's also a business. It's everything. So if you don't recharge that battery by doing these types of things, that battery will always be drained, and we all know how drained batteries end up. It's just going to fail, and it's going to die out, and you don't want to do that. So make sure that you're looking into these types of things. And number four, always find new ways to go about things. For example, if there's something you want to do or there's something you want to introduce your, to your spouse or if there's something you want to talk about that's probably like a little bit heavy, do your research, go online, watch YouTube videos, seek, you know, valuable um, input and kind of, you know, come up with a solution for yourself about how you're going to talk about it or how you're going to do it um, and these types of things. Um, there's so many other things that kind of... Um, uh, you know implement a healthy relationship or a healthy marriage top few that I could think of right off of the bat um, And as always read articles. There's so many articles you can read out there. This is a juicy question Do you think Shia and Sunni work? I feel like so many are negative about this so I'm gonna say my Opinion and my thoughts on it. 
it depends on the person. And I'll give you an example. I myself actually talked to a Sydney for a very short period of time. I said to myself, you know what, Zahra, try to meet somebody. He's Muslim, of course, at the end of the day. Um, we both worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We both know Prophet is the messenger. So why can't I get to know this person? Uh, mind you, I'm Shia Muslim and I'm very faithful and I, I have a lot of um, attachment to my roots and my beliefs. Um, and while Shia and Sunni, we coexist and we, we're united no matter what, I don't care what anybody says, we are united, we are one. There are those little differences that could pose as a uh, spark in the marriage or like a red spark in the relationship. And I'm going to give you an example of that. For example, when I was talking to this person for a very short period of time, I remember, you know, just asking little questions. Um, and I would see, you know, sometimes his answers would be against my beliefs. And I knew that right then and there, that could probably be very problematic down the line. Because that could mean like, okay, you know what, I'm going to argue with this person about how I believe about something. And then he's going to argue with me about how he believes in something. And if that's, if he's faithful about it and I'm faithful about it and I know I'm not willing to change it. And he knows he's not willing to change it. Well, then that's probably going to be problematic down the line. And that's not just one thing. There are a few differences between the Shia and Sunni school of thought. Um, and you know, one of them is the month of Muharram and how we commemorate the death of Imam Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet And I knew that, you know, based off of some of his answers that, okay, you know what? Some of his answers are kind of making me feel a little bit weird and I don't really like that. And I just can't imagine myself married to somebody like that. And that's just because that's the type of person that I am and I'm very tied to my roots and I'm very tied to my beliefs and even these small differences I'm tied to. I mean, I identify as a Shia Muslim and I'm proud of who I am and I'm pretty sure that that person that I talked to was also proud of his roots and proud of his beliefs and I respected that and he respected that as well and we kind of both parted ways. Um, however, however, if there are a Shia and Sunni who are a little bit more cool and are not too attached to their beliefs and are willing to negotiate or reconcile these differences and not willing to dive too deep into how you want to raise the kids as Sunni or Shia or do you want to raise them as Muslim or you know these types of things if you're both okay with that then I personally don't see why not I personally don't even see an issue with that I have a cousin that's married to a Sunni they have an amazing family a beautiful family they have four children together and they both agreed that they're going to raise the children as Sunni. Um, but that's because she agreed to that. Um, and he agreed to that. And it worked out for them both. Um, does that mean it's good that that marriage can work out for me or for anybody else? No. Everybody's different. You know, everybody has like a different opinion. Everybody has different beliefs. Everybody's tied to their roots in like a different way. So it kind of is just based off of the person. It's kind of based off of that person and how well you're willing to go and... Um, Push aside your beliefs if you're willing to even do that. Somebody asked me, is it hard living away from family when you're divorced with kids and do you feel lonely? Well, that's a really good question. Of course, it's hard for me to kind of live away from my family just because, you know, I mean, I'm very family oriented. I'm Arab, you know, I'm from Dearborn. You know, everybody, everybody is there is like my family, you know. And, um, but my, my, my main family, my mom, my sisters, my brother, my aunts, my, my whole freaking family is there. Um, and yeah, it's difficult. It really is. Um, and do I feel lonely? You bet I do. I feel very lonely. But I am so busy that I don't have time to think about loneliness. You know, I, I really don't have time to think about these types of things. I mean, there's days where my family calls me and sometimes I can't even like answer. You know, that's because like I'm busy with work. I'm busy shooting or like I'm out on, on a shoot and stuff like that. Um, so... That really helped me kind of shift away my feelings um, being away from my family because I'm super busy, I'm super focused, I'm like laser focused and I'm building a brand, you know, so um, and that that by itself is like, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Now, alhamdulillah, like, you know, again, I talk to my family daily, um, my family, I mean, now with COVID things are like really annoying, but like. Um, my family, uh, you know, is going to come visit me very, very, very soon. I'm so super excited about that. We FaceTime very often, but it can be very annoying um, when you want to drop off your kids and you have no, nowhere to drop off your kids. That's probably the most annoying thing for me. Um, but other than that, um, I miss my mom's food. I miss hanging out with my sisters. 
um, and that type of stuff. The way that I'm living my, my life right now is definitely going to be worth it in the long run. I don't know if that makes sense. And I know that one day maybe inshallah I could see them after like I've built my dream and made it come true. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely is hard. But I'm, I'm the type of person that like I understand that life, you know, life happens for a reason and things happen for a certain reason. And I'm totally okay with that. Somebody asked qualities that make someone a good spouse. Um, well, I mean, that kind of varies from like person to person. I mean, not all marriages are, or not all spouses are the same. Not all qualities are the same. It kind of depends on you and it kind of depends on him. And, um, for myself, I'll give you an example. The qualities that I look for is, um, this person is, very, is a faithful person. You know, this person is very faithful. Um, this person, um, he does like the five prayers. He does the fasting. He believes in Allah. Um, you know, and the prophet and, and all of that type of stuff. Um, he, you know, he attends the mosque regularly. He's a hard worker. He's willing to provide and help out um, if they're, if the family needed it. Um, I'm looking for somebody that is a little bit older in mindset. He's somebody that has a little bit more experience versus somebody that's just kind of starting out in life. Um, I'm looking for somebody that's very compassionate, somebody that has effective communication. Um, I'm not looking for somebody that's like, culture over religion that's a no-no for me that's like a red flag um and i'm looking for somebody honestly that like helps around the house that is good in the kitchen that is you know he cleans he does laundry these types of things um he's good at raising children this person is very kind and compassionate he's he's forgiving um he's not mean and he's not rude like firm um in his beliefs um i don't want somebody that's stubborn um, and like, I mean, again, these are just things that I value. There might be things that like you value that are way different than what I value. So what you should do is sit down and write on a piece of paper. And I'm always going to mention this. Grab a piece of paper and write down qualities that I look for in a spouse. And write down the top 10 things um, that mean the most to you. And that's how you know that these are the qualities you're going to look for in that person. Somebody said, what's the worst or meanest thing you've heard others say about your marriage and your divorce. I'll be very honest, um, and I address this in my old video, you can watch that here, where I talk about divorce in Islam and kind of what happens next. And one of the things that I mentioned in that video was I did not feed the people that asked me what, how, when, where, why. I didn't answer. My answer was very short, it was very direct, it was really simple, and I basically said, it didn't work out, I wish him the best, and he wishes me the best, and that's it. That's kind of what I did, and I haven't heard anything of anybody saying something bad about my divorce. Um, I'm very hush-hush about it, um, and I don't like people to have my name on their tongue in a bad connotation. So I worked hard on that, and I made sure that that didn't happen. Now, are there things people might have said probably did I hear about them no um, but that's because I knew that I didn't want to hear about them anyways because frankly number one I don't care and number two as long as you're not doing anything wrong or haram then you shouldn't care about people's opinions or about rumors that spread somebody asked was the reason for divorce um what was the reason for divorce um, I don't really want to get into it but I'll just be very I guess general in my answer but the reason for divorce was that we just are not compatible that's it we're just not compatible he's a great guy I'm a great woman um, we both agree that we are like that and we had our problems we had our fair share of arguments and fights and um, that doesn't make him a bad person doesn't make me a bad person um, but we're just not compatible on any level <laughs> period that's it a good question how can someone get over another person? I've been heartbroken and still not over it. Um, well, in order to get over somebody, um, you have to learn to love yourself. And I share this a lot on my Instagram. And I've done a couple of videos, reels, where I share kind of like my journey a little bit. Way for you to kind of move on is to love yourself first. Because if you don't love yourself first, nobody's going to love you. If you're not confident 
in who you are and if you're not confident in what it is that you're good at and in, in like your overall personality and just thinking that you're a total badass, um, nobody's gonna find that or believe you to be like that so do that first and foremost and when you do that you'll slowly start to recognize who you are as a person and then you'll slowly start to kind of like fall away from like oh my god why was I obsessing over him when I should have been obsessing over myself somebody asked me very odd question but how can I we find my spouse um well to find a spouse um, I personally like to meet people on like through networking like if there's a, obviously a common interest or a friend of a friend or things like that because I feel like you kind of get to know somebody for their natural self first versus like when you're on a dating app it's just so superficial and you're just like this is what he looks like this is his profile this is what we're talking about and that's it versus if you've met somebody at like an occasion or a wedding or if you know somebody through a friend of a friend or if you've met somebody through business and you kind of built like a relationship in business and then it kind of works out from there. Um, that's just my way of finding things and I feel like that would be way better than me being on an app. Am I saying apps don't work? Absolutely not. I think like being on an app could be an amazing way for you to find somebody. There are a lot of success stories from people that are on apps. But you have to be very smart on apps and you have to be able to like narrow down right away if this person's for you or not by asking the right questions. So I'm going through my second divorce and to be honest I had my all invested in this um, and I think that's the biggest problem is that you had your all invested in it you're not supposed to invest everything in, in you know invest 100% into a marriage it's a partnership it should be 50 50 um, you you give and he gives you take and he takes um, and the fact that you put in everything into this um, is probably where the problem arise and that's probably not a good idea um, going through a second divorce is very is a lot easier than your first divorce because you're kind of used to it but it also teaches you a lesson for what mistakes you did in that marriage and how to prevent it for the future um, my biggest suggestion would be to um, read 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 articles YouTube videos buy books um, and learn about like you know the issues that you face in your marriage and in your second marriage um, marriage fitness is a really good book um, and it really helps um, couples understand what's the greatest way you can invest in the marriage. Um, there's also audiobooks, qu question and answers, where um, you can hear people, you know, random people ask questions to the author himself, and like he will answer the the questions in very great detail. I have like the whole audiobook saved on my MacBook, and um, amazing, amazing insight, amazing feedback. Um, I suggest you start kind of working your way on that. Um, um, because it's very important to know what you're getting into before you get into it. Good luck. So this next question is, how did your first, how did you first decide that divorce was the option? Like what did it for you? So again, it's just basically, um, going through so many years, I'm talking five or more years of problems and arguments and zero compa compatibility. Um, and that's kind of when I kind of put things into perspective. Did I stop? I did not stop. I kept trying and trying and trying and he kept trying, but it just wasn't working out. And that's when we both realized like, that's it. This is the time for us to end it. And it kind of ended. And, um, that's just how things work out sometimes. And that's when I knew that at that point it was, it was, it was over with. Right now, through our second time separating, I know that I could never, ever be with this person, ever. Um, he's a very, like if I if I see him outside or see him in public, totally cool, total friends, very, very nice to each other. But could we live together in the same house? Most likely not. That's when I knew that um, it was over at that point. Second marriage, how to know you weren't making a mistake again? You know what's funny? I actually Googled this. I said. What are what like what was the divorce rate if you get married a second time? And I think it only increases if I remember correctly. It only increases when you get married a second time and then it increases more when you get married a third time, which is really bad news. Um but I think in order for you to have a successful second marriage and there are tons of success stories, um is by doing your research. Again, and I'm going to keep saying this, you need to know what you want. If you don't know what you want, how are you going to get it? Are you just entering a marriage or entering a relationship because somebody looks good or somebody makes you feel good or because somebody has like 
you know some certain amount of money in the bank you know these like silly things that like mean things to people so basically you need to just have questions based off of like different topics you know a couple topics could be based off of like um, the relationship itself about the, the values you want in that person or it could be about um, finances or it could be about you know living structure um, it could be about these types of things things that matter to you most you should be able to split them into different categories and kind of have different questions and have that person answer your questions based off of that now I got this idea from somebody and it's an amazing idea and it actually helped us narrow down things where we disagree on or things that we don't work on and I'm like hey that's actually an amazing idea what the heck how come I've never thought about this and actually when you have these questions kind of laid out um, it kind of helps you prepare yourself for a new marriage or for a new relationship um, and it kind of you, you have like a percentage at the end where you're like okay well this person out of all these questions only two didn't match but the other like 90 did for example so um, I mean you don't really know if it's gonna work or not you don't but you have to be very smart before you get involved in a second marriage you don't want to just like jump right in because of like just jumping in you know what I mean so you just have to like you know play it smart and, and know exactly what you're getting into what would you do if you want to get married to someone but your parents are refusing because of race that would be very sad if any parent rejected a very good candidate that fit the profile that made their child or their son or daughter very very happy and they were at a hundred percent agreement that they are for each other and you're gonna sit here and reject that person because of their color or because of their their um, because of their culture or because of their village or because of their country that would be a total shame would be a total loss to that family um, I personally I'm an independent woman and I respect and value my family very 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 much and I care very much about their blessing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ruling overpowers everything so the moment my family would ever say you can't marry somebody because of their skin color or you can't marry somebody because of this 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 and all of what they say completely stands in the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what our religion stands for that's when I draw the line and I say mama baba brothers and sisters I love you very much I value and respect your blessing very dearly to my heart but in this moment you are making a very grave mistake because this person I have known for so and so amount of time this person is an amazing person this person makes me happy I know what I want in my life and you kind of prove to them what you want and how this person you know fits the profile and is a very 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 good candidate and I don't see any reason for me not being with this person because of their skin color do I see that that person is a different skin color do I see that that person is from a different culture or from a different village or from a different country yes do I respect that we are different yes and so should you but you should not be limiting my marriage or my happiness or um, me completing my Dean because you disagree with that person's color culture or country of origin um, that's what I would say I would never ever ever want to be put in that situation but if I ever was put in that situation I would be sure to stand up for myself because as long as it doesn't stand in the way of Islam um, then it should never be standing in the way of my culture or in the, in, the, or in the way of my family and I think that's what's crucial for us to understand as a community so that's the end of this video for today I hope you guys enjoyed this video stay tuned for more videos please let me know down in the comment section below what kind of videos you kind of want me to film next I really love talking to you guys and answering your questions and filming things that you guys want so don't be shy reach out to me on Instagram reach out to me on TikTok feel free to contact me down below just let me know whatever you guys want I'll be filming for you guys if you have not subscribed you guys can subscribe and hit the notifications tab stay up to date let's be friends follow me on all my socials they are down in the description box below if you are enjoying my content I would really value your support you guys can watch my other videos over here and subscribe over here thank you so much for watching this video without further ado have a beautiful day